All right. Hello. We are back for another Other Ink Thursday. Uh, this is where I talk to people who haven't or, or about games that are not being published by Wet Ink Games. So today I have Will Munn of Adept Icarus and Alan Barr of Gallant Night Games, and they are the respectively the publisher and the writer of the forthcoming uh, now funding project uh, Cyan Starlight. So uh, Will, Alan, say hello. Hi. <laughs> Thanks hello. for having us. I followed instructions and said hello. Will said hi. I just want to note that. It's, yeah. Well, you know, I'm a rebel. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, since Will, I have I know less about you, Will. So I want to start with you and ask you kind of like what was your route into gaming in general before we talk about this project in particular. Just some background. What is like you've been doing this for how long like are you what's your why have you always been like making adventures like i don't know what is what is what's the backstory behind uh behind you this moment right yeah yeah that's a good <laughs> question i mean how far do you want me to go back i'm kind of i old, mean you can but... all the way back like i yeah. i played you know it started when i was playing jacks when i was five years old and i thought like but what if there was narrative here like i <laughs> if that's your origin i want to hear about it yeah yeah that's that's fantastic uh <laughs> no i mean i i first got exposed to role-playing games you know, not, not as young as some people but i was you know like in my uh like preteen right age and never got to really fulfill that desire to play because i got you know i made a character played for like an hour and then i never got to play again for like years Oh no. Years. And so it it's something that was always just nagging, like, I really want to do this. And then I finally got the chance. I played quite a lot for, for a long time. Um, but um I I took a long break from the hobby, actually. Um probably 10 years, somewhere in that neighborhood. Um and I was working at a company uh, where I happened to be working at the same place as Alan, uh, believe it or not. And we both ended up at the same writer's convention. Uh, and I was working on writing fiction. I was writing short stories. I was trying to write a novel. Turns out writing a novel is really hard. It's... Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, one day, I guess, you know, there was an opportunity to do a little bit of writing on RPGs. And I was like, yeah, that sounds fun. I'll, I'll do that. Right. And so, so I did, Alan was nice enough, actually got me my break in RPGs. So, so that's actually where the connection goes back to for the two of us. So I did some writing on some RPGs. I've been doing uh, freelancing and professional writing in RPGs for like five or six years now. It's been a minute um nice and uh yeah that's that's kind of the the origin the genesis i guess yeah yeah i mean that that makes a lot of sense what what kind of stuff were you do you what was your do you do you want to give us like a one line to describe the novel that uh i assume remains yet to be completed yeah no <laughs> <laughs> okay that's fine <laughs> but what kind of short stories were you doing were you already working in genre or were you trying to yeah, uh, yeah do like you know i don't know literary in quotes no. literary fiction type uh -uh. stories okay. no i had a, a a science fiction like sort of far future epic that i was working on that i don't think works in retrospect uh and then i had a uh like an alt history uh fantasy ish type thing that really? i was working on for a while i think that might still work maybe i'll come back to it someday sure and then lots of short stories and stuff one of them is has now been turned into a game and will get released maybe or funded sometime later this year or maybe next year at the latest so yeah, yeah. like it i would assume next year at this point right like well yeah 2024 for sure maybe 2025 right but, we're yeah. already on next year right yeah this, yeah, yeah this i th i believe this video is scheduled to appear on like the 28th of december so uh yeah. as people are hearing this it is very close to the end of 2023 
definitely next year then yeah uh so well that's all great so then tell so when at what point did you your work you've written some stuff for gallant night uh but when are you like no i've got to have my own i got to publish my stuff on my own name like and, and come up with the depth icarus and and uh, you know all that stuff what was the what was that decision like because not everyone wants to to do that like to become yeah. into that publishing role like what what motivates that part of it for you yeah the way i've described it before is i have kind of a, a um innate desire to be mediocre at a lot of things <laughs> and uh and so you know i kept getting interested by other parts of the process of games and and creating games and i kept doing pieces here and there and and uh and at one point uh, i was working on the zorro role-playing game with alan and had been exposed to much more of the of the process of creating the game in that in that particular game and i just i was hanging out with some writer buddies and we were you know just doing some fun world building stuff together and we were playing around with this technique that we used uh for some other stuff that we were doing at work sort of at my day job it was a it was a work writers group right and so we're sitting around a conference table in in like you know corporate america with a whiteboard and a pad a bunch of sticky notes and and markers and we were just messing around and we came up with an idea that we just really loved and we took it to a couple of conventions and like did it live in front of big groups of people or or involved big groups of people like in this collaborative process of building a world like people and shouting stuff out from the audience kind of stuff or no, or... they each like everybody writes their own items on sticky notes and then you put them up and you talk about them and you like deduplicate them and and uh, deduplicate nice word yeah and um it was really fun and and after doing that a couple of times it just felt like something that needed to be more than that it needed to be a full game and so decided to that was when i decided to make the company and and actually make the game so and that's the create is that create the Ari Arium create? create yep Arium create. so uh i i told you i wanted to ask you about the i don't know which i think that question leads into the the um because there's i was on your website just a minute ago and you've got three of them so like i knew that there was create and discover and now mm -hmm. there's evolve as well listed there so tell can you so the, the create is like the origin yeah of the world right so it's a world building right. is it a world building system world building tool or is there is there game like is it the, the, the world building is the game or is there more game once you built the world World and building. What do the other two books do? World building is the game in Arium Create. Yep, uh, and it is. It's probably I, I, there are a lot of there are quite a few world building games out there, and almost all of them, without fail, focus on this idea of, hey, I'm going to input my individual creation, and then that's canon, and then you input your individual creation, and that's canon, etc. And it sort of goes around when you have multiple people playing. But the idea behind Arium is there's a lot of collaboration that happens between I'm generating some ideas and now it becomes canon, right? And so that's the, I think the kind of the main difference. And we have, I think really good, really streamlined rules for how to make that fun and how to make that something that a group will enjoy and come out of, of creating that world with something that they all feel proud of and they all enjoy and like and want to role play in or write stories in or whatever it is they want to do with it right um so that's so kind it, of the the goal so is it so if that's the core book yeah. the create book or or the first book in the series the what are the other book, yeah. what do the other books bring in uh so the the discover book is a role playing system uh designed to work specifically and, and in, in a very streamlined way with the output of an Arium Create session. So while you can take the output of an Arium Create session and run it in any RPG if you want to, I mean, anybody, any, but any GM can do this, right? That's it's not something that's difficult. This was kind of our way of saying, well, you could, if you don't have a system that works for the thing that you made, like maybe use this. Hmm. And that was the the concept that we that we put together for that. Um, and it works it works really well. They do they pair nicely together. 
Um, it's, I don't think there's anything really splashy or really innovative about discover to speak of, right? I mean, it's, I think it's really cool and they do work really well together. Does it use like D6 dice pool? Does it use, yep. uh, yep. okay. D2. Exactly. A D6 dice pool. Yep. Uh, resolution system and it's, and it uses, um, features and flaws on top of items and it uses boons and banes on top of characters in a sort of similar approach to uh like aspects and fate but they each have right, a specific what... mechanical effect related to them where in, in fate it's a little little more nebulous i think right yeah yeah that's that is sort of the the challenge uh, feature and challenge of of uh having a good uh yes a game of that um yeah well great and what is the and what does evolve is that like uh yeah because uh, i don't know anything at all about that one i've not even seen that in in the physical form or does it does it have a it, physical form it doesn't it doesn't have a okay. physical form it's actually in development i just reassembled oh, okay. the original team to work on it uh just last month actually so we're we're meeting uh, regularly, working on it, playtesting, uh, and and moving forward to that. But what its its purpose has always been um, is more of a toolkit, but it uses a lot of those concepts and ideas from Arium Create, like the just the collaborative nature of it, and pulls that into role playing games and and also just other cool tools like. Hey, here's some things that we thought were really cool about Arium Create that didn't make the final cut for what we actually put in the book, right? Here's some cool stuff about Discover that we that we also or like it just didn't it didn't make like the final because we were making zines and we didn't want to make them too big and right, and right. Uh, and so some additional rules and and concepts, but also um, just like some cool improved downtime and and things like that as well. All right. Yeah. Well. Happy, happy crafting on that, and uh, look forward to seeing that join the join its 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 predecessors. Uh, yeah. I know uh, this is sort of like a half joke, half serious, right? Because you've done done the the triptych style with the covers, mm -hmm. and they all kind of move into one another. So, like, uh, is that is that why now that you've that is third part is in process? Now you have to like find other people to make other games that are not part of this system. Is that, is that part of the big, cause you've used up the triptych now you've used up <laughs> all the cover, right? Yeah. I don't, I don't have any more budget for cover art. And so now <laughs> we have to move on to other games. Yeah. That's obviously that's, that's the teasing part of this, but like, really what is the, like having focused so much on this, like create system, the Arium system, like yeah. what is like, it doesn't necessarily, it doesn't sound exactly like the next logical choice is to get Alan Barr to write you a solo sci-fi RPG. Um, so <laughs> hang on, hang on. Whoa. Hang on. <laughs> I am always a logical choice for your next project people. Well, like, I don't... Right. But I, it, it's, well, let me ask the question differently then out of respect for you, Alan, who've been so patient. <laughs> Uh, I'm just giving you why was expanding out from Arium to Alan's project the the sure. logical choice. <laughs> yeah, that's a really great question and I think the the best way to answer it is I lost my job. Um <laughs> that right. that's probably the the very easiest and best way to answer it. So last November uh I was laid off from from my day job, right? And you know, as I was trying to figure out what was next, right? Uh, I found myself with, and, and this is not to say that, you know, I didn't spend a lot of time looking for a new job because I did, right? And I have one and I'm I'm fine. I'm fine, people. Don't worry about me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you're fine. But um, during that time, I had about four months where I spent quite a lot of time doing more work on games than I was previously doing a lot more work. Uh, and I was having conversations with a lot of different people about a lot of different things, but Alan and I talked multiple times. So he and I are friends, right? And, and he was very kind and, and offered some great advice to me while I was out of work and, and things like that. And so we were talking about different things and he, you know, sometimes shows me things that he's working on. He showed me Cyan Starlight in a really early form. Uh, and I was really enamored. Like I immediately thought, wow, this is such a cool 
such a cool idea, right? The system is amazing. The, the, the whole premise, I just love it. I love science fiction. Like my first novel I tried to write was science fiction, sure. right? So it, it was a no brainer for me. And he's like, well, do you want to publish it? I'm like, yeah, I want to publish it. I didn't even like no hesitation. So sure. yeah. Awesome. So I'm going to uh, switch focus a little bit now to ask Alan here. Like, so hi, Alan, uh, you have, uh, you have, you know, Gallant Knight, uh, tiny D six is, uh, been around for a little while. Is that, is that your first game or what, what, what was the start of Gallant Knight for you? Was it Tiny? What did you hit on the Tiny, tiny system? Tiny Frontiers was the first game Gallant Knight game is published. My first published work was actually the rules designer for Planet Mercenary, which kickstarted before Gallant Knight Games started as a company. But due to the long development cycle, it came out after I'd already started Gallant Knight Games. So Dopin gets sort of conflated because of the release date. But Tiny D6 was where we started. Yep. All right. Well, I just didn't want to. I, I, I don't feel like we need to go all the way back unless you want to talk about your origin, your true mm -hmm. like beginning as a nerd. Like I don't I like I like you, living in mystery. Right. You you feel like you've had opportunities to talk about these things before because you've been doing this a while. Um so obviously there's I, I don't even know how many tiny games there are, right? There's I know there's dungeon and there's there's a spy one and uh there's there's a there's, lot. There's a lot. There's a you've done <laughs> you've done a lot of them. So is making a solo game and, and i know this is I, I, mm -hmm. news, news to me because you started a podcast and you've talked to people about making solo games um on your show and mm -hmm. uh i actually have this year earlier this year purchased one of your other solo games and played it uh i purchased um by endurance we conquer and played mm. that so uh, you're not a stranger to solo games obviously but is that right how far back does that go for you to before oh. cyan starlight is that something that you're playing with relatively recently like because i mean well you think yeah. about your answer i'll say that i decided that 2023 was going to be my year of solo games and i i had been interested in them and i had a little pile of them but i've played like 17 this year or some, something like that it was like this is the thing i'm going to do this year i'm going to play a bunch of solo games but i had no other than knowing that they existed, I hadn't really done them before. So mm -hmm. it, it's a big deep dive for me this year. And like I said, uh, one of yours was one of the ones that I've played. But like, so is it a new thing for you or does it go back um, earlier? Or... No, it's new. Um, maybe a year and a half at this point. Okay. Um, the first solo game I wrote solo rules for was uh, SEMA, which we kickstarted last December. So, you know, we're looking at 14 months or so. Yeah. Um, and there I leveraged um, my buddy Alex's rule set because he put it into Creative Commons. So I took his and then tweaked it and modified it. Um, but I'd played some before that. No, I, I historically don't play a lot of solo games. I don't play. Uh, I, I To this day, I still, I wouldn't say I played them regularly. I have many of them. I read them, right? I, I digest them, but like, I have five weekly game groups and all of them have like <laughs> multi people. So I don't, I would be spending a lot more. I'd be playing six or seven games a week if I was doing solo games. And, you that's, know. that's a lot of, that's a lot of games. That's, that's mm -hmm. a lot of games for anyone. Uh, yeah, I GM them all. I, I, so. I'm somehow not surprised at all that you GM. It wasn't deliberate. I, <laughs> it just but happened. You, I, but I also imagine you didn't fight too hard against it happening. <laughs> You'd be surprised. <laughs> be surprised. So if it's, you, if it's you're a, you're a, you're a fun player, Alan. I've had I've had the opportunity to GM yeah. him a couple times. It's been it's been a good time. I'm a great player. I'm a delight. <laughs> <laughs> well, so if it's a relatively new thing that you're doing, like what is it? I, I mean, I. I Sure. I mean, I can answer for myself and we can kind of talk about it because we both kind of are relatively new to it, but it, it definitely scratches a different itch for you when you're playing uh, than, you know, the the sort of social interaction. Uh -huh. But what is it that you like about them that's led you to write at least the, at least the third time that you've you've gone sure. into it? Like what is this is the sixth, actually. 
sixth actually i'm sorry i'm sorry no 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 no. some aren't out yet so you wouldn't have known <laughs> um i'm just saying like this is there there's a progression to cyan starlight and well uh -huh. i might i might include solo modes in future games i'm not sure i will write an exclusively solo game again mm. so um and ex and the and this was something i only realized the other day um is sort of if you look at my solo game trajectory they are all games about sort of ending up alone uh, when push comes to shove. And then you get to Cyan Starlight and it's a game where you start alone and you're trying to find a way to not be alone by mm. the end. Um, and I realized there's this, there's sort of this trajectory where every solo game I had worked on or designed led down this path of loneliness up to the point where I was trying to exit that path. And a solo game makes perfect sense for a game that's supposed to evoke being alone. Like it, I'm not. It wasn't deliberate, but looking back, I can see sort of this emotional and artistic disconnect that I didn't realize was happening until I got to the end of Science Starlight. Right. Hmm. So it's it's and so I yeah, I I see solo play as a tool for immersion, just like anything else in a game. Sure. Some games work as solo games because that is the genre they want to be. Some games don't, and that's that. There's that. Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's pretty. I'm not to put a fine point on it, right? But like, right, right, right. Uh, and so there, there's a little. You gave you guys sent me a um a uh, a little a little a look at the 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 in progress uh, uh yep. document. So I I've scanned through it. Um, and there is a longer version of what you just said about like the the isolation and the solo uh, the the feeling of loneliness. Um, I won't uh repeat it all uh if, unless you want uh unless you want to but like there is sort of like a brutal like the other one that i played you talked about the ending up alone uh by endurance we conquer is a uh is a, a game recreating the sort of like late 19th century early 20th century antarctic expeditions there's a lot of tracking of like supplies and like adding mm. days to your trudge across the ice and uh there's a it's it's a it's a real grind down to uh you know as your expedition members start to die and stuff like that um and just flipping through the the document of for science starlight like there's a lot of like really brutal mechanics built in there that are really grinding down the players or the player i guess because it's a solo experience right. um and that's sort of like that's so I'm not surprised, right? That that that, that right. like one game and the other game, it is sort of like that. They are very similar, but I I'm pretty intrigued by that. Um, uh, what you talked about about the trajectory, right? That like some of your other designs are grinding down to nothing, like the Antarctic expedition game that I've played, and this one is more about like a path out of that. It and it it mm -hmm. did I didn't notice in the mechanics how that happens. So like, is there um. Can you want to talk a little bit about the mechanics and uh, sure. and how that theme relates? Yeah, to yeah. So the the basic premise of Cyan Starlight is you wake up in the far future alone. You are, as far as you know, the last human. Um, there are other uh, sentient uh, beings out there, obviously, that you can interact with, but as far as you know, you are the last of humankind. Um, and you have to find out what happened. And the the game sort of takes on this gameplay loop of diminishing resources as you're going. Um, also balancing your sort of emotional state between despair and hope. And the big gameplay loop is you're in your spaceship, you move to a new system, you scan it, you decide if you want to investigate the sites or move on. And then if you investigate the sites, it kind of moves into a sub gameplay loop um, involving investigating the sites. But the, the general premise is you're trying to collect what the game calls insights um and you these, these are going to be on these various locations and once you get three uh you there, there's a table you roll on and it gives you a result and then in the book there's a qr code that takes you to a website and once you put in all three it unlock it unlocks one of 512 possible endings for the game based on oh the my. combination of the three uh insights you unlocked all right. Because there's right. there's basically three columns of eight, and so you get one from each column, and you combine them, and you get one of five hundred and twelve possible endings. And some of those endings involve you finding the solution. Some of them 
and sometimes that solution is good. Some of that solution is bad. Sometimes they don't have an answer. Sometimes they're designed to be provoking or flat, right? They, they're trying to sort of evoke an emotion. And the idea is that the same journey can end in a thousand different emotions. Yeah. And so these 512 different endings are there to highlight that. Hmm. So uh, I want to immediately, I, you guys told me that there was a website involved, but like you've, you've dropped it now. So like uh, I want to immediately snap back to uh, Will and talk about like from a publishing point of view, like, like this is like, okay, so we're going to make a book. And then also there's a website that needs to like work with like all of this data on it that like, and like, is that like a hair pulling experience for you, Will? Or is that more like, oh, I can't wait to solve this problem? Like which which way? Because that sounds like to me, I'm like, no, never. I would never do that. Just put a put a yeah. five it's just in the back of the book. Give them a sentence ending yeah. in the back of the book, take up six pages at the end. That's it. Like you don't need <laughs> a website, but like I mean, it certainly adds something. So what what was this a, did he have to convince you or were, or tell me about it? Tell me about it. Like, yeah, I don't know. Did you have to convince me, Alan? Uh, no. So I don't, uh, you probably remember this, but the initial book was very much like you described, Brandon. I just had the insights and said, those are your insights, write the ending to your story. But as we, after Will had agreed to publish it, Will and I, Will and I met because we worked at a software company. That, that specialized in software for uh, various uh, health insurance. And Will was in the software department and I was attached to software as like a project manager, product owner kind of person. And so Will has a very strong technical background, whereas I have a very, I, I am not technical myself, but I understand the process of sort of technology and development. Oh, excuse me. And so... As we were talking, we'd been talking about some other RPG related technology. Will and I are always kind of talking about that sometimes because one of us will have an idea and be like, what do you think? And we'll kind of bounce it to the other person. Me, sure. because Will knows tech. Will, because I am very immersed in sort of the RPG industry as a futurist in that regard. Um, And so we'll, we'll, we're always kind of talking through ideas like that. And I mentioned, you know, we were talking about X, but we could take X and make it Y <laughs> for this. Mm -hmm. And it was basically... It was basically just sort of an iteration on the same idea we were talking about. So the game didn't initially have that, mm. but it sort of organically, you know, and Will can take it from there, but yeah, to answer the original question. Yeah. So what happened for me is just, you know, it's been quite a few years since I've done anything directly with tech. Like I used to do quite a lot um, back in the day. Uh, so it's been, it's been a while. But when I, it comes back to the same answer as before, right? I, I lost my job, right? And I thought, you know what would be fun? Go back to my roots a little bit, learn a little bit about some new tech that I haven't played with or that, or, you know, refresh some skills, right? And so during that time, I actually built um, Arium Generate, which is a website that enables uh, people to just randomly generate characters for Arium Discover. Um, and if you find the secret hidden way, you can also see some other stuff there. But anyway, um, so I I made that website um, and I think it's uh, generate.ariumrpg.com or ariumrpg.com slash generate. I don't remember. Anyway, it's out there. Um, and we were talking about other types of things that you could do, you know, like that. And it wasn't, it was fun. I enjoyed it. Right. I had a lot of fun. I actually built it with a couple of, of tech friends and we recorded that. And I don't think that's ever actually made it out onto the channel that they were planning to put it on, but, but maybe it will someday, like we've recorded the entire process of creating the thing. So it's, um, yeah. Um, uh, a lot of, oh, I, I, he didn't have to twist my arm too hard because I'd just done something really similar, sure. I guess, right? And so it was kind of like, oh yeah, we could do that, and it wouldn't be that it wouldn't be that hard. Um, so what is actually is it like a code from the the when you get the insight? Does it give you like a hexadecimal code, and then you put that in in three fields on the website, and then it generates your ending, or 
you mentioned QR code. What it, is it? Are there different QR codes on the different like insight columns or whatever? Like how, yeah. how what is it actually like? How does the book interface with the website exactly? Yeah, good question. So right now there's currently one QR code. It's going to take you to a page where you can input the different insights that you've received. And as you input them, then they'll it'll tell you, it'll reveal something about, excuse me, what you've uncovered. So you could potentially start putting them in before you've finished all the way through the game, um, or you could wait until you're done and, and reveal them in that way. And then we have some other you know, Easter eggs and things like that that we may plan around the site as well, but but that's the, the gist of it for now. But then the 512 endings are generated randomly, or are they like... A They're subset not of them, if yeah. you found certain things, then you get only a subset of them or or <laughs> Alan's laughing at the other window here. What's the <laughs> and, and yeah. I mean, the answer could be like, we will know maybe the answer is we'll know by the end of the, the crowdfunding campaign how it works. But like, uh, you know, that could be the answer if that's the answer. I think. That's oh, I'm answer. muted. I that's The fine. answer is I wrote them all. <laughs> yeah, he did write them all. Yeah. There. So. So there, so basically, there's three columns of insights: insight one, insight two, insight three. Uh huh. And each one has eight options. So you roll a d8, and that's the insight you get. Right. And so insight one on column one is always the same insight. And so, and on the website, that triggers a specific piece of lore or text. Okay, so it's it is. So the five hundred twelve includes all like it's divided by three or whatever, like where you get. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Or if it was just if it was just, you know, 20, 24 insights that you could randomly assemble, you would have thousands, millions of combinations. Right. This is this is a way to keep it bounded. Yeah. Um and reasonable. But so like if you if you always pick one one one, you will get the same result every time. It is fixed. Yeah. Right. Because they are tied to those specific inputs. But if you pick one 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 and then one, two, three, the first third of the sort of the ending would be the same because it's generated by the same result. But then the middle and the end would be different. Okay, i i'm I'm not very mathy of a person, but i I'm beginning to sort of imagine the the tree of possibilities that you have here, and then mm -hmm. so that's like you've written all this content, and then it it's sort of like you've got i i I know just enough about website building to like maybe get myself in trouble. So like it there's some sort of script or CMS something mm -hmm. happening that like that like takes the inputs and then delivers the, right. the the pulls from databases i guess that are behind the screens you know that kind of stuff it it does it does technology stuff it does technology stuff right it's wizard yeah. magic that's what wizard it is. magic <laughs> so uh yeah go ahead oh i was gonna say one of the one of the reasons i felt safe proposing this qr code website hybrid solution when it wasn't originally the case was because I knew Will's background. Like if it had been with a different publisher, I'm not sure I would have been comfortable enough to say, Hey, I knew Will could spin this up. I knew he could do it in a way that was scalable and affordable to an indie press because he has the know-how and the resources is sort of in that domain, you know? And so it, it was, it, it's an example of the resources being available, evoking a different level of sort of creative application of the, of the game here. Yeah. And this kind of was my, unless you want to speak about the website itself, Will, I, I, I kind of have a next question building over what Alan just said. Let's hit it. Okay. So like, I mean, you're, you're creating sort of like, I mean, I don't know. I'm a big, I, I don't know if I'm a big proponent, but I'm, I like understand the terminology, the magic circle. And like, we, when we sit down to role play, we're doing a thing and there are certain, it looks like a certain way. Um, and then you're sort of, not necessarily breaking that, but like bringing in a website that's sort of outside the book and sort of this meta experience that's like bordering on like what are the 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 augmented reality games and like you're putting in codes and you've your websites already have secrets on them. You've mentioned that a couple times. So like um it, it's just another form of gameplay on one level, right? But it is sort of like also does it mean more in this sci-fi game context to have to go to a website at the end of the process and is that is that is it just about the gameplay pieces of it or is that sort of actually important to the narrative of discovering secrets through some sort of like codes in the game i mean the technology part of it yeah right? the, the yeah technology versus the website technology is it 
related to the idea of the technology in the game, I guess. That's an interesting question for sure. Um, I don't know that it's specifically related to the technology in the game, right? But I think it is interesting because, and I don't know if Alan mentioned this before, because this is a because this is a solo game and because it's a science fiction solo game where it's ultimately about getting to an actual deterministic ending, right? Uh, it makes sense to jump from the page to the website, right? So you're not going back and forth all the time. It's you're getting to an ending and then you're revealing that ending. And so I think that makes sense. Although I, I don't know if I, I don't know if it would be a problem in a game like this. Like maybe at a certain phase in the game, you could say, hey, we are like, go use tech for a minute, right? Go look up something or maybe use it to, to, to generate some randomness in your uh, game that's easier to do in that format than it is to do with, you know, dice. Uh, I mean, yeah. you can, you can write D100 or D66 tables all day long, but at the end of the day, like that's still a limited format where with, code behind it there's a lot more you could do if you wanted to so i i'm immediately like thinking about like how far either of you are interested in in taking this like you could put some because i again i've looked at the books so it's like there are you know all the the all the all, all the polyhedrals are there you know there's times when you roll d4s and d6s and stuff and mm -hmm. um so you could put a dice rolling part of this website that the the game invites you to come to like this is the cyan starlight website and here's the dice rolling parts of it and then here's the like secret you know <laughs> insight page and like put in your data there and, and like it's just tabs or whatever so that like you you are playing more of the game on the website and then or or your mobile device or whatever um but then then the obviously the next stage that i come to is like well just put the whole game on there like it's just a click through thing and it you I encounter, I do I want to interact with this planet? Yes or no? And then okay, Alan's shaking his head. No, no, no. So like it that's not yeah, I mean that's I again it's just like where's those lines? So, sure. So yeah. I I mean I love the idea of the website sort of almost being like a command terminal or console. Yeah, or like something like that. Ship, right. That does all the random probabilities and stuff. But to me, to me the act of sitting down and deliberately doing something analog mm -hmm. is important because it is easier to be introspective when you can't control tab to Facebook all the time. Mm. And if you are being alone, having to play the game primarily with pen and paper and dice means you are at least sort of alone in the space, right? Whereas online now, so much of our online identity is connected through these online communities. If I was just playing it online, I would be on my Discord. I would probably have Facebook up, right? Like, right. I, I would still be connected, and that would that would defeat in this case that would defeat the thrust of the game. Yeah, I like that as a a, a yeah. I mean, um, that makes sense. That makes perfect sense, uh, and that that you're further replicating the isolation uh by by taking you away from that connectivity you know that's good right i like that uh all right i do want to zoom out a little bit we talked a little bit and it, the word analog and talking about analog kind of makes me think of this because um you know like what is the kind of technology that it's like what, what kind of technology you're going to encounter is it a more like retro future kind of feel or is it sort of like everything is you know cyborgs and, and you know nanotech robots and it's all very flowy and smooth like what what kind of a presentation have you and maybe talk about a little bit the art too because uh i'm i'm a person who's always drawn to art so um you know you're, the game is full of robots right the pictures of robots and big hulking machines and stuff like that so either of you take that and kind of talk about like the art or the art direction or the the choice to make what kind of technology are you up against art direction oh uh there was none okay i mean that's fine that's fine i oh. mean there's a i let me so uh, for for context on the production side i wrote uh, what is probably 85 percent of the game before will saw it i think 
and it remains at its core relatively unchanged. There, I mean, there were edits and there were tweaks and there were fixes, but like the the product I sent will would be a step past an ash can or a prototype. Because I wrote the game directly into layout with existing art assets. And I started with the art. The game derives from the cover, which is a piece of stock art I had picked up from a Catapulca, which is a stock art Patreon. And I love the cover and I've been looking for a way to use it. And I was just messing around with practicing layout and I hit on the title. I looked at the cover and I hit on this tagline of lonely sci-fi role playing. And I kind of just started writing into the game. And so the art was drawn from just stock art that I had. I mean, there, there's nothing, you know, I think I used every available piece of stock art I had from the same artist in this book. Like I could not have swapped out any of the art easily. I'm pretty sure. So, well, that, I mean, that from that point of view, it makes it from an art direction point of view, then that makes it pretty easy. Like I'm going to use this set of art and that's going to be the look and the style of it. The, uh, I mean, people can see the, image on the uh follow page or well by the time this posts the the kickstarter will be live so i'm sure they'll see they'll see more of the the art but it's it's this sort of white background uh a landscape i guess sort of an isolated figure in the middle of this landscape the um is the cover and it is it is evocative and uh then yeah the the art looks the same so or it looks of a similar quality even if it's by a different person very uh you know some monumental stuff do you is there like um I don't know anything else that you want to say about like the the kind of the the stuff you'll encounter or the the kind of the things that the world offers what kind of places you explore like ruins of abandoned yeah. ships like I don't know what yeah. else what else is in the game so I mean you you don't encounter other humans there are alien species there are robots leftover elements of technology. Um, in the terms of the writing and the presentation of this existing universe, it takes a lot of homage from the sort of the 70s and 60s and some of the early 80s, that golden age of science fiction, uh, sort of the classic high concept science fiction, right? Yeah, that's um, uh, THX 1138 and Outland and uh, that's those are uh, what's the Blade Runner? I'm, I'm thinking yeah. more like it actually predates that even like when I say okay. golden age, I mean, so like we're talking like. Asimov just about literature, fiction. right? Oh, like, yeah, Asimov, exactly. Okay. Like that, that, that early golden age of science fiction literature, right? Where the futurists were sort of writing it, and it was about less about character, more about potential, maybe. Right. So it's a, um, it's like a foundation future where uh, the but there's only it didn't work out, right? The robots didn't yeah. save everyone. Uh, spoilers for the, the end foundation of that. was a big influence on it. Um, I'm a big fan of the books and I was watching the show around the time I was writing it. Um, Red Dwarf would be another big influence. It's sort of the idea of being the last. Yeah. Human. Yeah. 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 Um, and there's a few Red Dwarf Easter eggs in the book. Nice. Um, nice. You know, so alien, there's aliens uh, ranging from bugs to just alien species to militant empires to leftover robots, stuff like that. Um, the game setting is implicit. It's not explicit. Um, it's more implied through the stuff you generate on the tables than it is outrightly stated most of the time. Um, I would say, I mean, Will, do you have any... Yeah, no, I think that's that's definitely true. And it's it's kind of, it guides you, I think, as a player to think of how you would describe the scenario and the situation that you're in uh so while there are you know enemy combatants and things like that and there are uh or or you know you can choose to avoid them as well right um there are also you know planets and you know space stations and archives and and all kinds of things like that and, and the thing we ran into in uh in the stream we did the other night was a, a nano divinity which was fascinating um and and so as you're you know in going through this scenario um you're kind of doing a little bit of daydreaming as you go i think right and mm -hmm. thinking about what do these things look like how do they how do they work and and if you're a writer maybe you're writing those things down or maybe you're journaling a little bit right as you go you certainly don't have to but but yeah i think it enriches the experience if you do well, that was one thing that I wanted to ask about. Like, is there a is there a 
expectant journaling component where you're you're keeping your mission log and all that kind of stuff or is it more like this stat goes down change this resource move on to the next prompt like it you know what is the i mean i, I like you say either way is sort of like valid play but yeah. like uh, does it encourage one one of those styles or the other I would say just judging from how Alan likes uh, players in his game to blue book, I'm sure that that the idea is, yeah, you, sh you should journal some stuff. It would be great, but you absolutely can play without it. I don't know if you, what do you want to add to that, Alan? I, I, uh, I have never explicitly written a journaling RPG and uh, I would not consider this to be one. Yeah. I mean, obviously you can, the closest I would get is uh, probably uh you know, uh, by endurance, we conquer where you're supposed to, you know, I would call it epistolary rather than journaling because mm. you're supposed to write letters home about the stuff that's going on on the expedition. But I mean, at that point, I'm, you know, picking uh, details over anything actually relevant, right? Sure, so. sure. No, I mean, that's, it's just describing the the mood, I guess. Um mm -hmm. So I guess if you know you're the only human, there's not necessarily a you wouldn't be writing letters, right? Necessarily, unless right. you've decided that your character is going to mm -hmm. be keeping a journal for someone but, else, right? But maybe you know you're on a spaceship, and maybe the the um, custom of the time was to write logs, right? So maybe right. maybe yeah. you would write logs. Well, and there's you know, and and the, it's your narrative to decide, right? So if you if you decide, hey. I woke up with amnesia. I don't know what happened, mm. right? You you can say, "Oh, I'm going to write all this down now as a journal because what happens if that happens again to me?" Right. Right? right? And so you you get you have some flexibility in how you want to approach that. And th the expectation in the game would be that you would exercise that flexibility for sure. Right. Multiple ways to enjoy the the content. Right. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Uh well, I think we I mean the uh, I, I don't want to take too long uh, on this. We could continue to talk about this for a while, but like I'll, we don't need to discuss every single detail. But I do want to give you guys both a chance to talk about like the crowdfunding page itself and like what kind of cool options there are, what kind of bonuses or that you hope for. Are there stretch goals involved in this or is this going to be a, a, you know, one and done kind of thing? Um, uh, yeah. So tell us about the crowdfunding itself and the 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 kind of push and promotion you guys are going to be doing. Sure. Yeah. I think the, you know, we're obviously, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a big setting and we have a lot of things that we have talked about that could be so cool to do. Right. But also at a certain point you, you need a reason to do that in some cases. And so, uh, and, and not everything is free. So, um, but what we're aiming for um, is just to get out and get it funded and get it into people's hands. And in order to sort of lean toward that, um, there's a there's a ten dollar pledge level, right? That'll have maybe I shouldn't say dollars. What if we modify them before we launch? I don't know. Anyway, there's a there's a pledge level that's digital uh, that includes a a POD um, coupon for an at cost POD of a soft cover of the book through drive through RPG. And then we're also doing an offset print uh, version of the book, which will be hardbound. And it will also include a spiral bound um, journal that you can use if you want to, if you want to include like some journaling or you can use it for whatever you want. If you don't, yeah. if you don't want to use it for that, you can write notes in it or whatever, but yeah. We'll have the character sheets like the you know you've got a uh, a sheet for your ship and you've got a sheet for your character and you know there is will it those, have those in the spirals or is that or is it just blank page kind of thing uh it may have some stuff in it but it probably won't have the full character sheets i we we haven't talked about that um but we'll see it's, it's a possibility that's that the design isn't done on that yet Okay. Um, but the, the rest of the book is actually all laid out and, and ready to go. Um, and so that's just a very minor part that we need to finish yeah. up. Like what's the interior of the journal look like, but the last thing, uh, that's also included is a, um, I think a really evocative soundtrack, Ooh. uh, that you can listen to while you play. 
Okay. And so we have five. I, I, I'm I'm here for this because I was listening to some of my favorite like weird space drone stuff while I was scrolling through the book. It just seemed uh, entirely apt. Uh, so tell me what. Uh, tell yeah. yeah. I'm just throwing that in. Tell tell me more about what you're really doing. Yeah. Uh, so we have a we have a, a composer that we worked with to to license some songs um, that they had worked on but had not yet released um and so five of those songs will be included uh in the in the digital version you get a digital copy of them also i think we're going to link to a um to a playlist on soundcloud or spotify or somewhere right that you can you can listen to them online if you want to as well um we're we may have a stretch goal for something physical Ooh. we've been talking about this he's been bugging me about this for i can't even tell you it's like the only thing i've heard about for like two weeks now <laughs> oh whoa whoa <laughs> like five days <laughs> all right let's not i i have been pushing for a cassette that was i was gonna imagine like of anything it has to be a cassette right yeah yeah because yeah. i'm a i'm a I am a big, so one thing we didn't really touch on, and there's more about this on the page and Radio Free RPG dropped a podcast the day the Kickstarter launched where Will actually interviewed me on my podcast Ooh. about the game. Um, and the origin of the game comes from my struggle with my bipolar disorder. So, um, but one of the things that helps me when I am feeling manic is I do a lot of analog things. I write with a fountain pen. I, uh, when I write, I don't use anything else because i have to slow down and think about what i'm writing when right, i shave i exactly. shave with a straight razor rather than like an electric razor because i have to center myself and be present and so i have as part of my uh sort of on top of the medication and therapy and all the other things i've done to remain mentally healthy one of the other things i've learned to do is to find places where i can slow down and force myself to center and be present um because that helps with my mental health in the face of my bipolar disorder and so vinyls and cassettes are things i have and things i own for that same reason i have to stop i have to pay attention to them i have to listen to them it forces me to be present and not sort of run rampant with the depression or the mania and so as part of this presentation i've been i have been pushing for a cassette because they are relatively affordably produced so poor poor will has had to listen to me hit the point where i was like i will just pay for them now so we can do them <laughs> I mean, uh, it, it the Kickstarter hasn't launched at the time of recording, but that will be a tempting, tempting uh, option that I will have to hover my mouse cursor over. Um, See, I was telling you, people will buy it. Oh yeah, well, I mean, there's a there's a very specialized niche market for if there exactly is that a cassette, kind of stuff. If there is a cassette and there's a liner note for the cassette, you can be absolutely positive that there will be something included in that, that you can only get oh, in that liner note. Absolutely. More that, secrets. That, More that, secrets. That sounds, that sounds perfect. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we will all, everyone who's watching this video uh, at the time it drops, will know whether or not you made that decision. You put it on yeah. your And your also, list. if if Will decided not to, you can watch this video and then come tell him you want the cassette. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. well, you can set it as a really high stretch goal like yeah if you make 17 million dollars like you well, you can afford no. to make some cassettes you know like just put it really why would you why would you put goal. that on us that's not happening <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> yeah i wanted to touch on one more thing related yeah, to the music if that's okay so the music so we had the five tracks we're licensing um from and the artist's name is is uh lance clark um and so good it, it is it's it's perfect uh but but beyond that uh we did a we did a live stream the other day when this airs there'll probably be another one by then i would imagine um of playing yeah. you know, two more probably two yeah, I think. Some, oh yeah you're right two more by the time this airs probably um and we used some of the music in the background of that uh but also as we were playing the artist uh watched the stream and he felt inspired at the time and composed a brand new track 
specifically for this game. It's the it's going to be our main theme, basically. Nice. I have a main theme. I've never had one. This is always <laughs> incredible. Time. That is yeah. all of that is lovely. Like I, I love. It's going to become my ringtone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I I love that. That like in the you know I, that that is that is exciting because there is sort of like a, a a cyclical process where it's like you know the art and the music inspired the game and then the artist then or the art musician then gets to like compose based on the thing that the game has become right. like that that's that's great to like loop that back around yeah. and that that's that's exciting that's, it, that's entirely due to will and adept Icarus sort of facilitating this game so yeah it's it seems like it's a real that. our when our powers combined i mean you you know you're um absolutely uh, a group uh, effort yeah yeah um all right <laughs> amazing so is there any final things that you guys want to talk about about uh about the game or anything is we we left behind or uh is it uh time to head to to the wrapping this conversation up i don't think if we didn't cover anything i guess come back our kickstarter about being sad and lonely during the holidays so we're not sad and lonely during the holidays that's right i mean, I, I, don't, <laughs> right. I don't know yeah uh i i mean what is what are the dates uh just so we say them on the video so that people watching the video will know yeah. how much more yeah, time absolutely. they can they can wait yeah so we're launching on december 19th campaign will run through the 10th of january all right so you'll have a couple weeks after this video uh to to still act upon this uh limited time offer right the, that's how okay. they you know that's how they work <laughs> Awesome. If you you buy one cassette, you get a bonus cassette. I don't know. I'm not going to promise that. There's no bonus cassettes. <laughs> it, a whole new soundtrack on a whole a second cassette. You know what, I'll just buy you a cassette. I'll send you a cassette, whatever. It's not going to be anything related to the game, but I'll just go to the thrift store and get a cassette for you. Well, I've written down Lance Clark, so I'll be checking out right. uh, their music uh, here in a minute. And, uh, you know, we'll see. See, maybe they have cassettes already. You, could, you have to off-market purchase. Oh my gosh, I didn't think about that. <laughs> definitely did not just make a make a note to go check that out so uh alan will thank you so much for talking to me today about this game and and the other stuff about your design philosophies and your history and the way you work uh, it's been a pleasure to talk to you both uh this is a great way to close out the 2023 my series of interviews of talking to other creators so before we leave for the for the for this and for the for the year Tell people where they can find you if they want to hear. Obviously, the, the Kickstarter link will be in the uh, the page, uh, the description of this video. But where else can people find each of you on the internet if they want to know more about what you're up to? Uh, you can find me uh, through my company's website, adeptichorus.com. I'm on most socials as Adept Icarus as well. So you can find me uh, there if you'd like to. Um, we have a really... Uh, a discord community that's a lot of fun um so you know come join up and and uh hear about other upcoming stuff that we're working on and we do a lot of community uh sort of contribution um i have a game that's in progress that we have done collaborative world building with people in the discord server to create it's a multiverse uh setting and so we've created several settings within the multiverse setting with the community in the discord server it's been super fun so yeah. Awesome. 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 And Alan, where about you? Where, where, where about Steve will live on the internet? Uh, you can find me at alanbar.net uh, or gallantnetgames.com. Uh, other than that, I, uh, most of my socials are personal. I don't really have public socials. That's fine. Yeah. Great. People will find you where, where they can. I'm active in our Gallon Night Games Discord. Like that's probably the best place to find me if you want to interact with me on like a real time basis. I'm there every day for most of the day. So there you go. And uh, yeah. And uh, thank you again for your time talking about this game. I'm really excited about it. I'm looking forward to uh, to seeing it in the real world, uh, with or without a uh, mixtape available. Uh, and the. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I've been Matthew Orr. This has been Other Ink Thursday for Wet Ink Games. Uh, thank you for watching, everyone. And uh, hey, go go check out this Science Starlight game. It, 
Sounds pretty awesome. Thank you.